Listen, what is it? It came from the bank. Spread out, and when they come through that door, let them have it. Of them, the Alton gang. And Marshal Frank Hammond is dead. I'm telling you, I don't like it. What are you squawking about, Jeff? You're in this as deep as I am. Sure, because you got me in with a pack of lies. I want out before we get caught. We're not going to get caught. Our boys are too fast. Besides, don't the whole town respect us as vigilantes? Haven't we cleaned up all the rustlers? Isn't my palace saloon a perfect cover-up? And isn't your father above reproach? You leave Dad out of this. Yes, we did a lot of good. Before you turned the vigilantes into the dirtiest bunch of bank robbers in Arizona, I tell you, I want out. Now, you listen to me. One false move out of you, and I'll put you out for keeps. Well, I'll stick. But you better slow down, Cole. Now you're talking. That's a lot better. You let me do the worry. And after they robbed the bank, why, the bandits got clean away. But your son and his men were ready, Marshal. They'd have gotten the outlaws, too, if Frank hadn't stopped a bullet. It's a mighty hard thing to say, Marshal, but your son is dead. He did your credit. And as head of the vigilantes of Gila Springs, the folks have sent me to tell you that they're proud of him. This time, I'll get that outfit. I'll round up every man I have. We'll go to Gila Springs and pick up the trail from there. Oh, you'll mess if you do. That gang is clever. And when they find out you're leveling on them, they'll break up and hide out. You're right, Cole. If it is the Alton gang, they probably know every man in my outfit. I know the very men for the job. I hate to ask them to come. They're on vacation. But I know they'd want to help when they find out what's happened to Frank. I'll send for them. Give him the B. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. Whippoorwills, bobwhites, birds, and bees. A fine pal you are. First vacation we had in years, and you're spending the time dogging the life out of me with your imitations. Oh, that reminds me. Did you ever hear my dog fight? Stop it! Stop it! 
I'm not kidding you. If you don't cut it out, I'm going to pack up and go home. Well, I sort of thought you'd like that one. Well, there's only one thing that I'd like, and that's food. And if you'll get in the house and go to cooking, I'll forgive you. Oh, cooking. Yeah. Vacation for you? Work for me. Well, for your information, there isn't anything to cook until Dave gets back with more provisions. Well, you always got an alibi to get out of work. like he's bringing provisions either. What about the groceries? We don't need any. When I got to town, I found this telegram waiting for us. What does it say? You'll do me a great favor if you come at once. Important. Marshal Hammond. Wonder what he wants. Whatever it is, he says it's important. We'll have to be leaving pronto. And give up our vacation? We're merely paying the marshal a visit. We're not giving up our vacations. Here we go again. And I was having such a good time. Yeah, at my expense. That's the situation in a nutshell. Someone has got to get that gang, and I'm asking you boys to do it. We're mighty honored that you sent for us, Marshal. But we, we just started on our vacation. The first one in five years. That's right. I'm sorry, Marshal, but I guess we're going to stick to it. Trouble. Nothing but trouble. Besides, why do you need us in Hewlett Springs? The best man in your forces there. I was coming to that. You boys were very fond of Frank when you were growing up together as kids, weren't you? We loved him. He's our best friend. And the top hand at this law business, sir. Yeah? Give him time. He'll get the job done. That gang killed Frank last night. Say what? What are we waiting for? Marshal, swear us in. Frank would want you to wear his badge. When you get to Gila Springs, look up my old friend Mike Rand. You can trust him. Tying their horses up outside. Are you sure? Well, I ought to be. Didn't they railroad me with that Brady gang? Well, why worry? You served your time. Got anything on you? What? After that bank hole guy, huh? I'd like to meet him. What are you going to do? Invite him in? No, I'm going to invite him out. You stay here, they might recognize you. The rest of you fellas come with me. Springs, what's your first move? Just take it easy. We don't want anybody to know we're around. And no one's to know who we are. No. Think we ought to take a look in the saloon? Might pick up some information. I think you're right, Alibi. Let's go. Hiya, strangers. I reckon that's us, mister. We weren't expecting a reception. Well, you're getting one. Now, this town's had all the excitement it can stand. There's no room here for strangers. I don't know who you are, mister. But you've sure got us wrong. Oh, no, I haven't. And being head of the vigilantes, I'm giving you one hour to get out of Gila Spring. You can't drive us out of town. Now, wait a minute, Davy. Maybe they can. And maybe they can't. Oh, no. 
on day. We can't afford to start anything. How are we going to get that work done if we have to get out of town? Well, we'll work that out. Our best bet now is to see Mike Rand, like the marshal suggested. All right. But it sure burns me to get run out of town. Oh, it does me too. Let's get her horses. We'll be back. You're not kidding. Hey, Jeff. Where have you been? Why? What's up? I've got a job for you. Did you see those three fellows that just left here? Yeah, I just saw them getting on their horses. Well, I just ordered them out of town. I want you to follow them and see that they go. I mean, go. You get me? Leave it to me. driving that team. You fellas cut across and try and hit her off. I'll follow her. Right. you're doing. And don't you reach for that gun or I'll let you have this whip. Lady, I, I thought your team was running away. It certainly was not. You're just in time, mister. This man was about to hold me up. Oh, he was, was he? Well, don't you worry, ma'am. We'll handle him. 
Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm certainly glad you came along. I tried to get away from him, but my horses just weren't fast enough. Well, he looks like a mighty tough hombre to me, ma'am. Oh, well, of all the nerves. Can you imagine that? You look like a bandit to me, too. I'm sure he won't bother you anymore, ma'am. I'm sure of that, too. My name's Mary Rand, and I'm mighty thankful for your help. Are you leaving so soon? Yes, I'm late enough now. My dad will be furious. Well, see you later. You sure will. A fine pal you are. So I'm a bandit, huh? I'll show you. Oh, yeah? Say, don't you fellas know there's only one way to get along with a woman? Yeah? How's that? Keep away from them. We don't think it's funny when a couple outlaws stop a girl. We didn't stop her. We were trying to help her. In fact, we were on our way to her ranch. Yeah, to see her dad. Now, you'll see him, all right. I'm taking you in. Hand over your gun. Well, I ain't a-going with you. Somebody shot at our pal, and we've got to help him. I said you were coming in. Oh, yeah? Yeah! Yeah! What are you up to? Well, I'm Dave Sharp. Sure got away fast. I can't figure why he took a shot at me. This is tough country, Dave. You're tough. My daughter? Yes, but uh, not formally. Manny, this man's an outlaw. He tried to hold me up less than an hour ago. That's impossible. This is Dave Sharp, daughter. How do you do? Hello. Marshal Hammond sent him here. Oh. You see, Mr. Rand, she was driving at breakneck speed. I thought her horses were running away and stopped them. It was the other cowboy, the nice-looking one who stopped. Mr. Rand, your daughter's all mixed up. My partner, Dusty King, just tried to embarrass me. Well, I could be mistaken. He doesn't look so dangerous now. Well, anybody who drives through wild country at that speed ought to be stopped. So that's it. How many times have I told you not to drive so fast? You will not get that team to break speed records with again for a long time to come. What is it, Tiny? I picked up a couple of prowlers and I got them hobbled in the bunkhouse. Tiny here is mighty careful. They're probably your pals, Dave. You go down and identify them while I put the horses away. Lead on, Slim. Hurry back. I'm not mad anymore. You bet I will. But I like you even when you are mad. It's crowded, ain't it? That girl's really nice. She's even nicer when she smiles, did you notice? Dave seems to think so, too. Yeah. He hasn't lost any time, either. 
He's already squared himself. Well, I'll break up that button romance. Hey, here they come to let us out of these things. Oh, boy, will I be glad. <laughs> There they are, you know them. Hi, David. Tell him who we are. Yeah, and hurry up about it. I smell cooking. Yeah. I never saw these men before in my life. I thought so. Oh, he knows us all. Well, this I'd is let just a kid uh, 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 uh. Don't let him out talk you. Be firm. Don't worry. Very dangerous characters. Look, fella, this has gone far enough. Why, sure, don't pay no attention to him. I tell you, we're all right. You can save that for the sheriff. Can you imagine that partner of ours? Just you wait till I get out of here. I'll fix him. Yeah, and I'll fix this overstuffed hippo. Yeah. You know, I think Tiny got a couple of bad ones this time. In fact, I think I recognize one of them. Really? Mm-hmm. There's a price in his head for arson, larceny, and bigamy. You know, I wouldn't get too close to them if I were you. Then you got here in the nick of time, Marshal. I wish you'd look at that guy out there. He sure moved right in. I'd be glad if I could just move out. Nice ranch you have here, Miss Rand. And mighty nice people run it. Yes, Dad's got a fine bunch of boys. Tiny's one of the world's best. Tiny? Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I met him. Funny thing, I, I don't seem to remember anyone since I met you. Oh, I come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Gone to Louisiana, my true love for the sea. My, what a lovely boy. Wow. One of the worst crooks I ever met was an opera singer. They tried and feathered him. It's lovely. They finally hanged him. What? Dave, come on in the house, will you? We have a lot of things to talk over. Sure, Mr. Rand. Excuse me. Thought I saw Susanna coming down the hill. Buckwheat cake was in her mouth, tear was in her eye. Says, I am coming from the south, Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. Cause I come to Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Keep it up. I'm going down to New Orleans and then I look around. And if I find my honey, I'll fall right on the ground. But if I do not find her, I know I'll surely die. And when I'm dead and buried, Susanna, don't you cry. Oh, Susanna, don't you cry for me. Cause I come to Alabama with a banjo on my knee. Do you and your partner often play tricks on each other? Arson and bigamy. There might be something in it. I don't know who to believe. Well, they're pair wise hombres, ma'am, but couldn't you settle out after we get out of here? I think so. Well, Tiny, come take these chains off. Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Don't mention it. That's my good deed for today. Well, it's just like I say, Dave. There's never a trace of this gang. They're like ghosts. I see what you mean, Mr. Rand. It is strange. But we'll do the best we can. 
Oh, uh, Duran, uh, my partners, uh, Dusty King and uh, Ella Biter Hume. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Rand. Glad to know you, Dusty. I knew if that canary ever got started, I'd be a dead pigeon. How do you do? How are you, Alibi? Fine. Fellas, I, I'm kind of sorry about the bunkhouse. I didn't recognize you. You know, the hot sun, I couldn't see very yeah, well. Yeah, we know. Uh, Mr. Rand, I'm a little thirsty. May I have a glass of water? Sure. In the dining room on the table. Excuse me. boys were partners all the time. <laughs> Dave tells me that you were on a vacation. We were. Kind of. <laughs> Hello, son. Where have you been? I was delayed in town, Dad. Well, I've got a little surprise for you. I want you to meet my friends, Dusty King and Alibi Trahune. How do you do? Mighty well, glad to know you. That goes double. If you'll excuse me, I'll get cleaned up a bit. Surely. Hello, sis. Yes. Now, this is Dave Sharp. Dave, this is my foster son, Jeff. Glad to meet you, Jeff. Uh, mighty glad to know you, too, Mr. Sharp. The boys were sent in by Marshal Hammond to clean things up and try to find out who killed his son. Jeff here is a member of the local vigilantes. They may be able to give you some helpful information. Uh, sure, we'd be glad to. Maybe we'll ride in and talk it over with your committee. Do that. You'd better stay here with us tonight. Thanks, Mr. Rand. Tiny will put you up in the bunkhouse. What, again? And don't take too long. Chicken and dumplings will be ready in a jiffy. Chicken and dumplings? <laughs> Honey, <laughs> fry that and for me. <laughs> Jeff Rand. Well, I wonder what he's doing in such a hurry. You remember the fellow took a shot at us this afternoon? Yeah. That's him. You mean Mr. Rand's son? His adopted son. Looks suspicious to me. What do you say we follow him? I think you're right, Dave. We ought to find out what he's up to. And miss out on all those chicken and dumplings? You boys are going to get in awful bad with Miss Mary. Alibi's probably right, Dusty. Yeah. I don't see any reason for all of us going in town, do you? No. Well, I ain't going. Oh, now, I just wouldn't be too sure about that. Besides, it'll soon be dark. Oh, Juan, you're always boasting how you can follow a trail in the pitch dark. That's right. I get a chance to eat somebody else's cooking for once, and I ain't gone. Oh, yes, you are. And besides, we'll save you some of the chicken. And all white meat. Yeah. I don't want to go. Now, you run along. You'll like it. It'll be, it'll be a nice I... trip. To you in your office? Cole, they don't scare. I took a shot at one of them and missed. He almost got me. You missed? That's not very convincing, Jeff. And have you forgotten what I said about false moves? No. And don't you forget that I'm warning you again. Go slow. For those three in these parts, that makes sense. They're stopping at Dad's ranch. Dad introduced them to me as marshals. He said that Marshal Hammond swore them in to get the men that killed his son. Dad even suggested that the vigilantes cooperate with them. Hmm. That's not bad. I hope it serves to bring them in here. After you ordered them out? Why, they're just fools enough to come back. And if they do, we'll know how to handle them. Wake, Dusty. Hey, Dave, wake up. Oh, fine pals you are. Make me miss my dinner and then won't even bother listening to me. 
I'd do all the work in this outfit anyway. Maybe if I got a pail of water. Oh, oh hello. Hello, hello alibi. Hey. You back? Mm. No, I'm still in town. <laughs> Gosh, that chicken was good. Well, we saved you some. Yeah, here it is. Nice and fat, too. If you're more interested in playing jokes than you are listening to me. Oh, we're not alibi. Did you find out anything? Yeah. I followed Jeff to the Palace Saloon. He talked to that big shot that run us out of town. His name is Cole. That all seems to add up. But they sure don't act like vigilantes to me. Yeah, vigilantes don't run around taking pot shots at innocent people. You know what I think we ought to do? I think we ought to go into town and pay them a friendly visit. Find out why they drove us out of town. Maybe they'd apologize and sort of work with us. If they don't, we'll at least get Jeff where we can talk a little more social life. With a little extra persuasion. Alibi, don't you muff this. You practice up on your double talk and go to town. And take Elmer with you. Baby, oh. we better be dressing. Howdy. You keep good Kentucky bourbon here. We keep the best. And sell the worst. <laughs> you men want something? Yeah, me and my partner here with Jibble Cranby with the Sassafras billing on the Riles Crank. And make mine a big one. I beg your pardon. Would you mind repeating that? Oh, no, not at all. We both want a glass of Glimmer Glow with just a handful of Barnley. And Elmer wants a tall one. With a, a whipped cream on top. A glass of Glimmer Glow with whipped cream on top. I know what I'd like to give you. Hey, I believe we'll just change the order. Oh, you're going to change it? <laughs> Uh, give me a Cavini with a Spirio Canut cocktail and just a dash of celery with a cherry flip. And bring a straw with mine. What did he say? Are you a foreigner, mister? Oh. Howdy. Howdy, buddy. Mind if we sit here? Notice the girl. Howdy, howdy. Uh, I can't mix them drinks. You're going to drink straight whiskey. Say, I can tell you how to save your hair. How, my little man? How? In a cigar box. <laughs> <laughs> you keep on, I'm going to put you in a box. <laughs> well, here's mud in your eye. Not bad. Howdy, friend. Howdy. I reckon I owe you an apology for ordering you out of town yesterday. Yeah? Well, I didn't know you were on official business. My name's Cole. Well, thanks, Mr. Cole. I'm Al Ryder Hoon, and this is Elmer. Hi, big shot. You sure had those boys scared. <laughs> you weren't scared, were you, Elmer? Not me. I can run 70 miles an hour with a broken leg. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a hard time getting out of buying here for a drink. They, uh, where are your pals? Aren't they coming, too? Oh, they got woman trouble. But they'll be along pretty soon. Fine. Jake, bring these boys over a drink. I'll see you later. Okay, Mr. Cole. So long, Elmer. Here, look at you. You fellas got some cards, I'll show you some tricks. I haven't got him in with I'll show you how to get some. Now you see, gents, there's nothing in my hand. Nothing in my sleeve. And nothing in your head. Quiet, Elmer. Alibi's putting it on for him. He's really doing his stuff. Yeah, apparently he's on friendly terms. We better go in before he overdoes it. Baby, don't let that hot head of yours get us in any trouble. I'll be as cool as a cucumber. You got some of my cards? No, I haven't. You trying to lie to me? What do you call that? Be ready. Hi, man. Aren't you ashamed? Drunk again. Hello, fellas. Ed, this is Dusty King and Dave Sharp. Boys, meet Ed Cole, head of the Vigilantes and owner of the palace. Howdy. Howdy. I think we've met before, Mr. Cole. Yes, that's right. 
Your friend here accepted my apologies for yesterday, and I hope you do the same. Well, anybody can make a mistake. That's right. Bartender, give them what they want. What do you have? Sarsaparilla. I'll have a glass of water. You boys are heavy drinkers, aren't you? <laughs> I've been waiting for this chance to square things with you, you low-down mangy coyote. Wait a minute. What's the matter with you? He's a double-crossing polecat. Now listen, Ace. You either shut up or get out. I'll do neither. He framed me with that Brady game. And I'm set on that account right now. any other way to get you birds out of there. Well, there wouldn't have been any fight if Dave hadn't gotten pot-headed. Oh, what do you mean? I didn't lay a hand on him until he took a poke at you. Well, then what happened to Jeff here? He and the lights went out together because he stopped a bottle that was meant for you. Well, let's get out of here. Stupid bunch of bombers, you've let them get clean away. Yeah, and they took Jeff with them. Cracked me down when I tried to stop him. Well, we've got to get Jeff before they make him talk. You boys try and pick up the trail. Well, there's not much more to tell. Cole brought in four gunfighters to pull the bank hold ups and from then on used the vigilantes for a cover up. And before I knew it, I was in so deep I couldn't get out. Well, go on, who killed young Hammond? You'll not only be helping us, Jeff, you'll be helping yourself. You mean I'd get off? No, we can't promise that. When a man breaks the law, he's got to pay for it. We can promise this, though. Marshal Hammond will be more lenient with you. Well, I wasn't there at the shooting, but but Cole bragged about doing it. Cole? There's one umbrella I won't use a gun on. Well, what about this ace fella? Well, he leads the holdup gang, the Altons. We've got to trap them all, Jeff. Now, will you help us? Yes. Yes, I'll help you gladly. I'd like a chance to straighten this thing out. What do you What do you want me to do? Well, here's what we had in mind. I can't believe it, Jeff. You working with a gang of murdering robbers. But I didn't mean to go that far. That's no excuse. I'll turn you into Marshal Hammond myself. Now, just a minute, Mr. Ryan. Jeff came clean with us. Cole roped him into that gang. And doing anything now would upset all our plans. What plans? We want to plant the idea, in certain quarters, understand, that the Cattlemen's Association has $10,000 in the Gila Springs Bank. That's impossible. We haven't any $10,000. Don't worry. We'll make that outfit think you have. That's right. All right. You boys are running it. I'm sure that President Jameson and the bank will cooperate fully. I'll have Mary drive me in and make all the arrangements. We can trust Jeff to keep an eye on Cole. All right, then. I understand, Mr. Rand, and I'll do just as you say. And I'll send your message to Cole right now. Well, hello, Slim. Yes, Mr. James. Will you tell Mr. Cole I'd like to see him here? Yes, sir.
I'd better stay in town, Mary. You head to the ranch, and this time you can race that team. Tell the boys everything is set, and for them to get in as fast as they can. Take my saddle horse. You'll make better time. He's out in the alley. Thanks. I'll hurry, Dad. You'd better get out of sight. If Cole sees you here, he might get suspicious. Right. Good afternoon, Ed. Hello, Jason. You seem kind of busy. Yes, a little. I was busy myself, but one of the boys told me that you uh, wanted to see me. What's it all about? A big shipment of cash just came in for the Cattlemen's Association. I'm sending it off to Phoenix tomorrow morning for safekeeping. What I'm worried about tonight, the Alton gang. You're right. You know, you can't be too careful with that gang, Luce. What do you want me to do about it? I wondered if you'd detail a few of your vigilantes to keep an eye on the bank tonight. Well, sure, I'll be glad to. You can trust my boys. They'll go the limit. Uh, you can't tell me anything about their reputation. I'll post a guard right after dark. Thanks. So long. Goodbye. Great work, Jameson. I'm still not sure those marshals figured this out right. We'll find out tonight. Where were you last night? I was clunked on the head. I woke up in the alley. Mm-hmm. Ace, get the boys ready. What's doing? That bank's loaded with money again. But ain't it awful soon to take this bank again? No. And after the job, you boys can take a vacation until things blow over. All right. We ride in same as usual. And crack the joint as soon as it's dark. Stepping on, didn't you, Mary? Listen, boys. I've got an important message for you. Well, uh, wait a minute now. Take your time and get your breath. Sure, there's no hurry. There's plenty of hurry. Dad's got everything fixed. He wants you to meet him at the bank just as soon as possible. So please hurry. You fellas get going. I'll ride home with Mary. Now, wait a minute. I'll ride home with Mary. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, yes, I will. You boys can both get going. I can go home by myself. Well, it better. It's going to get dark pretty soon. Go on. Certainly glad you're here. Cole bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. Good. Let's go on the bank and get set for him. Mr. Jameson, these are the range busters. How do you do? Howdy. Gentlemen. I hope you boys know what you're doing. We do. Mr. Rand, you'll be working behind that filing cabinet. Alibi? You better get behind that teller's cage. According to the plan, Dusty and I will cover you from the outside. Uh, what about me? You stay right where you are and pretend to be working.
get here any too soon. You said it. I don't think I can open the safe. The cashier changed the combination. And didn't tell the president what the new one was. Open it up or I'll blow you in a kingdom come. Open up and quit stalling. the gang. And that's 
for Frank. Elmer, it's amazing how smart you are. You don't know anything yet. I'm a mind reader. You mean you can tell people what they are thinking? That's right. I know what's on your mind. I dare you to tell me. You're in love. Elmer, you're wonderful. Oh, boy, am I lucky. Now, wait a minute, Elmer. She doesn't mean that she's in love with you. Is that so, Mary? No, I mean the boy. Oh, those long kids. I'd marry the first one that walked through that door. Miss Mary, you want me? Not by the wildest stretch of the imagination. <laughs> Thanks, folks. We'll be seeing you. <laughs>